Welcome, my friends, to the Bob and Brad podcast, produced by Bob and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. I am Bob, and I'm exactly one half of the Bob and Brad team. And today, I am going to be joined by Dr. Robert Schleip, and we're fellow Germans, um, and he knows everything there is to know about fascia. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, what do I need to know about fascia? You are going to be amazed how this can affect your life. And if you're having problems with plantar fasciitis, back pain, uh, all sorts of things that you didn't think were related to fascia could be, it could be the answer to your problems. And also, if you want to stay young, you got to see this guy. I mean, he, uh, I won't tell you his age, but we'll reveal that in the, in the podcast and we'll reveal it in, on the video. You're going to be amazed. Uh, he looks a lot younger than he is, and there's a good reason for it. So uh, welcome to the show. Dr. Robert Schleip. Okay, I want to welcome to the show, Dr. Schleip. I'm so glad you joined us today. Yes, I'm very much looking forward, Bob, because I'm one of your heroes. I know you are one of my heroes. Vice I'm versa. one of your fans all the way across the Atlantic here in Munich, Germany. Awesome. And as we mentioned before, I also have a German background, so we'll get along just great. And I'm it Robert. Looks- so, all right. Well, while we go to get started here, I wonder if we, um, we're going to tr- try to talk about fascia today and why everybody really should be interested in this. Um, could you give us a brief background uh, or backstory of your professional career? Uh, I started as one of the first rolfing practitioner, which is a uh, um, deep tissue massage invented by an American biochemical doctor, Dr. Ida Rolf. So I learned yeah. that in Boulder, Colorado, was one of the first Rolfing practitioners here in Germany. I have been teaching that, practicing that with a lot of satisfaction for more than 30 years. I also have been a practitioner in the Feldenkrais method of somatic education invented by uh, Dr. Moshe Feldenkrais. And I've been licensed as a naturopath uh, in, here in Germany but I've been not satisfied with my own teaching regarding the scientific basis of these two modalities. And that's why I ask for a sabbatical. That means where a teacher steps down, teaches less, so that I could focus on something that I felt like I had not done before so much. And for me, that was wanting to deepen my scientific basis for these body therapies. And I liked it so much that I extended the sabbatical and then I extended it again <laughs> because I get to get, uh, because good. I happen to know the world leading researchers then and I could collaborate with them. And that was so exciting. So now uh, this is my, I think, 14th sabbatical. And my Robin colleagues, they tell me, Robert, we miss you. Huh. But what you have been stirring up is also quite helpful, and they invite me to uh, to carry on. Is that is that when you obtained your PhD also? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So I, I went back at the age of 50 to the university oh. to do a PhD. Incredible. And my PhD was on fascia. So oh, sure. uh, on, uh, in these two modalities, in the Rolfing method more, there was a lot of fascia, which is kind of the muscular connective tissue that normally has been uh, considered to be a wrapping organ, keeping things together, but not as important as the content, as the muscles or the organs. But uh, I had been knowing or I have been hearing from my teachers that it has more importance than commonly is contributed to it. But exactly. I wanted to know, and that's why I went back to the university and spent a lot of years in the laboratory and got very excited about yeah. it. Dr. Sleip, uh, for our audience, uh, would you maybe talk about, who, I, I, I'm going off the tr- track here, but uh, would you talk about um, who rolfing is generally for? Is it mostly for pain control? or? Yeah, it was invented more to improve people's posture. Uh, because the posture is often not so much influenced only by muscular tension, then you could straighten up and it would be gone, but by connective tissue shortening and and adhesions. And this is a very strong, um, it used to be quite painful in the early days, but now we have softer techniques, uh, melting deep tissue release method 
that, that works with, with fascia. But now most people come not only to, to improve their posture, but to improve back pain, neck pain, plantar fasciitis, so uh, myofascial or, or for, uh, soft tissue pain that may be directly or indirectly to bad posture. Excellent, excellent. Um, so I wonder if we could give a description of fascia and um, also it's four different functions. I know it's- Well, fascia is, is uh, you could say a new name for what you have been calling connective tissue in the past. And sure. uh, you, uh, you know it uh, as the milky thin envelope around a piece of meat that you have on the dinner table. Yep. So the outside there is this milky half transparent uh, membrane around it, but that can be very tough. Like on the bottom of the food, it's three millimeters thick. So like two pieces of leather. <laughs> yep. And, but also our lumbar fascia is uh, very uh, thick giving off. us a lot of support. So the first function is it is our organ of form. And if we would have a chemical where um, you remove uh, fascia, but leave everything else there, you, I would be a, a pebble on the ground. You'd collapse. You'd collapse. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. So it would be just like a, a pile of meat on the ground. Can, but if can, you had another chemical where you remove everything else besides fascia, you would have me standing in front of you. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. So my my glasses would be gone. My hair might be gone. Uh, the 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 skin would be gone. But that's only two millimeters. But the rest of it uh, would be there. Um, I like to, I like so, to use the example of the grapefruit in the. Uh, yes. Yes. So in in the grapefruit, um, it's basically juice, and uh, and what makes it not float away are these not only the membrane around it, but also if you look at the different slices, it's very thin membranes, but it's a very uh, smart packaging of membranes, bags in bags in bags. Right. And if you look at the volume of the bags, it is almost nothing. And water in oil shoes is almost everything. But with a piece of uh, grapefruit, I can break a window. Sure. So, so the same thing, I'm a, a rubber shoes standing in front of you. And, uh, but, but what gives me the appearance of being as strong, at least as a piece of uh, juicy grapefruit, are these bag in bag pockets. Dr. Slipe, I would like, uh, like to mention in your book right now, this one called uh, Fascial Fitness. Um, it's actually where you gave the grapefruit example, but this is written for the layperson and- uh, yeah. And I, I think it's it's really converted my thinking on fascia. I mean, it's really fascinating. And uh, you also have a website, correct, that people could go to? Yeah, I highly recommend Somatics, Soma, S-O-M-A, T-I-C-S, somatics.de, D-E for Germany. So that would be my personal one. Very good. Thank you. Uh, sorry to interrupt you because you were on to the next. Uh... Yeah, so the first function is it is our organ of shape. And uh, that is also interesting. Many people want to have uh, uh, more distinctions in their muscle, uh, but they don't want to become more bulky. Of course, if you are as skinny as me, you may want to have more bulk sure. in, 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 uh, on your thigh and on your upper arm. But if you are already pretty voluminous, but still you feel like you're getting flabby, then you don't want more muscle meat, you want more distinction. And that means the tension of the envelope. Oh, yes. And, and, and whether your meat on your upper arm hangs down or whether it has a very nice tension, just like a fresh piece of grapefruit, is not so much the matter of how much... Uh, uh, meat mass you have, but of the envelope. So how much shape you have is to a large degree determined by the proper tension of the envelopes. So well, that would be the first function. I don't mean yeah. to pick on them, but I know a lot of women that would be very interested in how- And men, yeah. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Both, <laughs> correct. So we can tell uh, them how to exercise, yes. not for muscle mass, but for the proper elastic tension of these mem membrane 
mem membraneless envelopes that you have around. I got and it. And now we come to the second function, which is for elastic movement. And uh, this has, had been first discovered by kangaroos in Australia that can jump 13 meters, but they have, don't have very powerful legs. So they couldn't explain it. And then they found out that their Achilles tendon have a very high elastic recoil capacity. Oh, yes. So that means uh, they are like a rubber band. If you pull it, it bounces back very quickly. And you can use the stretch in the tendon and in the fascia, just like in a elastic rope or in a bungee cord. So basically their, their leg fascia were, were, were as elastic as bungee cords. And then they found out that there is one monkey that has the same um, bungee-like uh, fascia capacity for bouncing back. And that is not gorillas, not chimpanzees, not orangutan. It is you, Bob, and me. Really? And, our, and, <laughs> and people of our kind. So our leg fascia, and that makes us different from orangutans, in case you wondered. Gotcha. I was <laughs> just... That we have this elastic skipping uh, possibility. And if you look at the way how children of Homo sapiens, not orangutans, yes. play, and that is different for each species, like uh, young cats play different than young horses or dogs. And now the question is, how do young Homo sapiens, how young humans play? And they do skipping games. Yes. So you see that everywhere. So we reinvent skipping and say this is fascia training. Gotcha. But now we have better evidence for it. So we are bringing back elastic recoil, hopping, skipping that our ancestors did for other reasons, for the mentality and the mood lift. But now we bring it back into, into uh, sports because we know it's not ideal for building up muscle strength. It's not ideal for building up cardiovascular endurance. It does, but we have better things. But it is ideal for increasing the bungee-like storage capacity that was neglected before. And why that is so important, it, one reason anyway, uh, I'm going to interject here, is obviously it's going to protect your joints. Yeah. Your, yeah. Your, your knee, your hip, they're all going to last a lot longer if you got elastic Elastic recoil right, in it. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And I mean, the bad I, message is if you don't move, your fascia changes from an elastic uh, stocking into uh, dry ropes that, that are more brittle and that can tear more easily. Is that, is that the worst thing you could do with fascia? I mean, is that the, the probably the number one cause of fascia going not bad? not move at all? Yeah. Probably. So we can have a debate. What is the worst thing you could do to fascia? Sure. Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, so one thing it, it would be to immobilize it. Gotcha. So if you have a cast where you cannot move at all, afterwards your joints are stiff. So that would be almost the worst. The second worst you sometimes have to do, and that is getting surgery yes. or injuries where you have scarring. And sometimes the sure. scarring, for example, burn scars, often become so aggressive that the whole connective tissue loses that recall capacity ah. and everything becomes very, very stiff. Very, very good, understood. Yeah. Uh, we got so, so, so now we had the second function, which yeah. was this wonderful bungee so, right. like recall capacity. It's not new, you know, that, that gives people elastic quality when they walk and when they bounce and normally you lose it with age. But now we know this is, uh, uh, capacity of the collagen fibers. Actually, the collagen fibers uh, in people who have that elastic recall capacity, if you look through a magnifying glass, it has little waves. And when you stretch it, the waves stretch, and that gives it the elastic recoil. So when you are young and you're still doing hopscotch, etc., your Achilles tendon has a lot of what is called crimp, so these regular tiny waves, and that's what you want to have. So, so your fascia looks like curly hair. But when you get older and you don't skip and bounce, then the collagen fibers get straight. 
and it, they are no longer able to become elastic. But the good news is you can reintroduce the, that crimp, not in That's, three days. That was my well, question. Is yeah, there we go. <laughs> predestined to have this as we no, age? Yeah. Um, uh, so you can reintroduce elastic uh, rebound or recoil capacity in a matter of three months. Oh, wow. Uh, so you need to be patient. You can build up muscles already in five, six weeks and show it to your friends. Sure, right. Uh, you see it's a tiny bit more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very good. But, but if you want to get more elastic fascia, you should have more time than five or six weeks. Sure. Uh, so in a matter of three months, your fascia can be partly uh, regenerated where a lot of the collagen fibers already have that elastic recall capacity so gotcha. so that is a nice function still for the second function for the elastic recoil capacity as an essential part of human movement very important yes i could see that yeah. so and the third function i think you wanted me to give all the four, all four. yes i would i, would. I <laughs> but, want people to know what uh, amazing yeah. structure this is yeah but, but people can also read it up in the book Sure, because yeah, I need exactly. to honor my co-writer, uh, Johanna Bayer. She, to she told me how to make things really clear and not to scump or to jump R over. Right, right. So oh, it was written, written very well. Yeah. Uh, the book has sold more than 100,000 times. Oh, it is by fantastic. far the number one book in the fascia oriented movement. That's field. fantastic. Yes. And and uh, I take some of the credit myself, yeah, for yeah. some of the sparkling ideas. But I think most of it is the wonderful uh, images and writing and making things clear and making them practical yes. from Johanna. So yes. a big thank you goes to her. <laughs> I probably would have sold 20,000 books or something like that. Uh, I, I think you're downplaying <laughs> your talents, but... So, so she came up with these four categories. Sure. And I think they, they cover almost everything. They, they are very, very well. Good. And the third category is nutrition. And uh, that comes to the fact that the majority of fascia is bound water. So it is water that is attached to little collagen fibers, uh, elastin fibers, to hyaluronan that gives your uh, skin this very nice, useful capacity. And uh, that if you do fascia stretches or foam rolling or fascial manipulation, it has a sponging effect. So if you don't move very much, and that would mean that if you work on the fields or on a farm at actively for three, four hours a day, you have no need to do foam rolling in the evening or to gotcha. get a rolling session. Yep. <laughs> it would be fun, but you don't need it. It would be luxury. Sure. But if you happen to have less physical activity, either sport or working on the fields or in the farm, then doing some ritualized fascia treatments, for example, yoga-like stretches or foam rolling or self-massage or a professional massage is a very nice way to move the stagnant water that contains a lot of waste products from your, your cell metabolism. And it would be healthy to squeeze it out once a while. And uh, that would happen if you are very physically active, but if you're not, then your health suffers and you get older and more brittle because of the uh, stagnation of the fluids in your, in, in your connective tissues. Well, I and saw... then you have these wonderful sponging effects where you squeeze the water in different directions, not only in the lymphatic one direction, so as many directions as possible, and you will feel more juicy and, and rejuvenated afterwards. And that is a very important function. Well, I saw a picture of you in the book where you're hanging for some... Uh playground equipment <laughs> and yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, do you mind if i ask uh, and you don't have to reveal this if you don't want to but what is your age 
My age is 67 now. Yeah, yeah but look I have at to you. think about it. I mean, you look yeah, at this I'm, I'm fantastic. I'm still bouncing. Yeah, so if you, if you can share the picture, I, because I love it very much, yeah. because I, I yeah, always inspire my clients to go with me to children playground. Of course, each country is different. In some countries, the police will get very nervous if a single man like me sure. goes to a gotcha. children playground. So please uh, do some research before. But sure. uh, if you and I, Bob, if we go together to a German uh, children playground, nobody gets nervous. Oh, and, a... and, and we can be children and hang upside down in these rope sure. towers and have a lot of fun there. And, and then you don't need to go into yoga class or in a fitness studio. Well, your skin also looks very young. <laughs> yeah. So you, you got the whole package. I mean, yeah, yeah. So, so that is already one application that sure. fascia not only likes multidirectional movement, which we right. had as children, you know, when you climb up trees yeah. or when you chase, you chase each other under the dinner table, you know, yeah, yeah. you have all kinds of right. angular movement. <laughs> so with adults, you need to be creative too to reintroduce multidirectional movement and uh, going to children playgrounds and hanging down and climbing and doing different uh, games where you try to get in the last corner and out of it. Sure. Uh, this is very healthy for the fascia, but also for the nutritional function. Gotcha. Because then you get uh, into uh, pockets that you never squeeze out in your sponge-like body. And, and your body likes it. It likes to get fresh water, which is very clear water out of the blood plasma. It doesn't have any of these free radicals, the so-called waste products from our cellular metabolism. It doesn't have pro-inflammatory cytokines in it that we have because of lack of movement or poor Understood. nutrition or emotional stress also gets into pro-inflammatory uh, uh, contributions in our body liquids so you can regenerate does by it, getting into angular movements or foam rolling or stretch. Does it carry some nutrients too? I mean, yeah, besides, yeah, 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 oh, yeah. yeah. And, good stuff. and recently, that is also addressed in the book. A lot of research has been on gelatin products. Uh, of course, it doesn't exist yet in a vegetarian way. I, I have a colleague who works on. Uh, biologically engineered uh, rice that contains gelatin. Really? They basically, so basically it, it is cooked uh, collagen tissues. And people have been in your country more even than in Germany, they have been listening to the grandmother again to eat uh, chicken soup yeah, that's or right. bone broth. And that basically that, that is uh, cooked collagen. And that would be one of the nutrients that you want to have in your body. And, uh, and you can produce that with proper fascia loading, but you can also substitute it by from the outside with good nutrition. So where like, like once a month or once a week, if you are, have uh, a need for it, uh, that you have some gelatin containing bone, bro bone broth I see. As, as an additional uh, nutrition for that purpose. Nutrition is always important, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, yeah. It always plays a big role. But as a couch potato, you can eat as much as you want. You will not get fit from it. Yeah, so, that's right. So you need to move. That's number one. Right. Now, <laughs> else you may, and then you and then you can top it by 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 good nutrition. But it's not. You either do it through nutrition and or you do it through movement. That is not it. The, so for right. pressure. For fascia, gotcha. movement is, is the essential path. Gotcha. And then you can put the head on by good <laughs> nutrition. On nutrition, yep. Yeah. The cherry on, yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. The, uh, the fourth function? Yeah, uh, uh, fascia. And that is very new, exciting. We knew it, but now we have the latest numbers. We got them half a year ago uh, when we did a new calculation, how many sensory nerve endings do we have not in our skin we knew that not in our ear but in our fascia so in the connective tissue in our body and in the latest calculation we came to the incredible number of 250 million oh my god endings oh. in your body white fascial body suit 
And that means it's richer than your skin. It's richer than your sense of seeing where everybody assumed for homo sapiens, for humans, this is our number one orientation in the world. For your dog, it's smelling. But we thought for yeah. humans, unless you're blind, it is seeing, you know, that is our dominant orientation. Right. But, but now we find out, no, the so-called sixth sense, how you feel your body that Aristotle uh, forgot in the five senses. So feeling your body through your fascia is the richest sensory organ that we have. Now that has a lot of implications. First of all, we need to include more how fascia is organized, but also in how we train our children. You know, if we have them sit in school and only train their uh, hearing and seeing, uh, they are half uh, dwarfed, uh, so they are uh, they, they are they are not getting as much stimulated, so that yeah. is a major discovery. Oh, well, I we think... feel our body in movement and in space um, is largely coming from our facial envelopes. Well, I think it uh, plays a large role upon you saying that in, in the elderly. I mean, to, to try to prevent falls. I mean, yeah, yeah, if, yeah. If, yeah, they, yeah. if they can sense better, they're going to know where they are in space and and yeah through their feet quite often, yeah. right? The fascia. Yeah. So. And, and now we are going into geriatric homes. Uh, music works quite well. So you have them standing and starting to bounce. So this oh, is a sure. muscular bounce. And you do that with them. And then everybody finds the bounce where they get this sense of lightness. And, and that is a very good pre uh, prevention also for these many falls that are happening in right. them because they are not at home in their body. Good for osteoporosis too. I mean, yeah. obviously it's going to yeah, strengthen yeah. the bone too. So, all right. But well, I don't recommend people do it without some kind of instruction. Right, or somebody yeah. with them. So yeah, all... yeah. But the book is a good introduction because it goes from very gentle, small exercises towards more moderate ones. Yeah, again, I want to mention the book uh, Fascial fitness, practical exercises to stay flexible, active, and pain-free in just 20 minutes a week. Uh, in our area, you can certainly find it on Amazon, but it's it's all over. So and yeah. you can find it. So very well read. Yeah, and thanks to Johanna Bayer, the co-author, she put the 20 minutes per week already on the cover because sure. it's not a replacement for walking and cardiovascular exercise and swimming and, and muscle right. exercise, but it's a complementation to add, to add it to, a, so to whatever people are already doing in terms of physical fitness. Dr. Schleip, we, we kind of talked, we started talking about this, but uh, on how fascia can get, um, I suppose, injured. But one of the main things you talked about is surgery. So I'm just thinking about you know, it seems like in the, in, in the past, people would probably do the surgery and just cast yeah. aside the fascia and yeah. not be concerned about it. I mean, are they more cognizant of it now that they try yeah. to maintain it? Yeah. So like when the appendix surgery in the past, yes, they took all the three fascial layers and glued them and stitched them together. Oh, gosh. So, so like sewing them together. Because uh, they were considered just as uh, moderately important as the wrapping of, of a Christmas present. And now they change their procedure very much, just in the last few years. So the image that we came up, and I think it, it's, it's very suitable, is uh, when you get a Christmas present, it usually comes with an envelope, a wrapping. And people first look at the wrapping and say, that's very nice. But then you put the content, the real present, whether it's a watch or a little computer or whatever, or a smartphone. And then you assume that the present can be understood and made to work without the envelope. That is a normal assumption. And that's what the anatomist also assumed that you could understand each organ, even though it comes with a special envelope, by looking at it without the envelope. So for the muscles, you know, you put the envelope away and then you see origin insertion and you can say it probably is a hip flexor. Gotcha. But then we found out, no, the muscles in many people may, has a different functions and nobody could explain. But now in the last few years, we found out 
in some muscles, for example, the gluteus maximus, 60% of the fibers go into the envelope. So it has a completely different function with the envelope than without. And that is similar, like if you have your, your watch and you, it doesn't work and you call the hotline and they say, Dr. Schleib, where did you put the wrapping? And I tell them it's in a garbage bin <laughs> downstairs. And they say, sure. well, would you mind getting it back out? <laughs> sure. Know? And I give you more instructions. And then you learn that the watch only works in a certain way. You need to place it on one side of the envelope. And then you complain and say, yeah, I should have known before. And they tell you it's in the small print. It was <laughs> known in the old literature, in old India, but also in complementary medicine. People like Andrew Taylor Still, the founder of osteopathy, Dr. Ida Rolf, they had put it in the small print. Is it crazy? But of course, it's a big surprise for everybody. So as a takeaway, really, for the layperson, if you're going in for surgery, really, it's, it's uh, you want the not least invasive procedure possible, correct? Yeah, so you want, uh, you want to discuss uh, with the surgeon. Uh, so if you are a swimmer, uh, if you are uh, any kind of uh, happy dancer, tango is the meaning of your life. I have a friend for whom tango is everything. <laughs> you know? sure. He rather prefers to have back pain than to be a less elegant tango dancer. <laughs> yeah. right. He should discuss it with the surgeon. You know? And then the surgeon can say, well, we have three options to make the cut. But for you, I would do the second. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, um, can fascia, we talked about, it can become, uh, can get the bounce back. Does, yeah. it, does fascia regenerate? Does it become thicker? Does it, you know? Yeah. Um, so, uh, for your lumbar fascia, if you sure. don't move much, it becomes uh, paper thin. So, gotcha. it's just like rice paper. Oh. And then you can have strong muscles, but it's surrounded by rice paper. Oh, sure. And then when you bend forward with a round back, uh, then the rice paper gets too much tension. And then yes. your old teachers have told you never lift something with a round back. Right. And that happens, but your rice paper gets thinner and thinner because it's unused. But then eventually you lift something with a round back and not the muscle fibers tear up, but the rice paper, the fascial envelope tears. And then you say, I shouldn't have done it. But your brother who works on a farm tells you, look at my rice paper. It is two millimeters thick. It is like, like a piece of a, a wetsuit. And that's what you want to have. So use it or lose it is not only working for muscles, not only working for the brain but also for fascia, you need to load it regularly, not every day, but every couple of days in order to make it stronger in a healthy way. For your lumbar fascia, I don't want rice paper in my lumbar fascia. I want a two millimeter nice layer of lumbar fascia there. Right, and that refers to, I mean, all parts of the body. I mean, plantar yeah. fasciitis and yeah. the yeah. IT band. Now you but also they found out in people with chronic low back pain, there are two layers of lumbar fascia and they glide related to each other. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So, so it is li like my shirt that glides on another shirt underneath. And that's what you want to have. But in low back pain patients, they are glued together, both layers. And then, of course, the surgeon could come and split them. But much better would be stretching or foam rolling. And I was supervising a foam rolling study where people went with their lower back on a foam roll. And afterwards, the two layers of lumbar fascia had more gliding they motion weren't. in relation to, to, to each other. So I think you cannot only make fascia stronger and more resilient, but also give it more sliding ability in relationship to each other. And you have a, a whole uh, program, basic program for back, for backs in your book. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on, it, on it special shows. emphasis. Uh, yes, yeah. yes. It's, yeah. uh, and I highly recommend it. Uh, if you would be working on a farm, if you do regular yoga, you may not need it because sure. you have the squatted position. You have the greeting to the sun. But in a normal couch potato week, you don't have these positions. And then certain areas of your lumbar fascia get thinner 
and they start gluing together. Yeah, I, I don't think think of the exercises as being that difficult, but no. they, yeah. they yeah they look like they're obviously very helpful. I mean, and so, they are fun to do yeah, because sure. <laughs> they they are often uh, these extensional movements, and they remind you of your childhood. Can you talk about how the muscles and fascia work together? Oh yeah, of course they always work together, but uh, with certain movements you load more the fascia. For example, if you are bending forward with a round back, then the erector spina, the back muscles, uh, don't give you much stability. And they are actually relaxing, but then the envelope gets more of the tension. Sure, so we sense. recommend uh, if you're working on the field or if the snow comes and you're shoveling snow, <laughs> we recommend to do the first 10 times with a straight back. And then yeah. your back muscles get activated, but then after a couple of moves, they may get tired and may enjoy a little break. And then you put a little less snow on your shovel and you do it with a slightly round back, but you do it with an elastic bounce. Interesting. And you throw the snow over to your neighbor who hopefully is, <laughs> That's right. has a good humor <laughs> and throws it back to you. But would it, that would be something, would you really work your way up to that to try to get the yeah, bounce back? Yeah, and, yeah. And, and, right. Yeah. So I, I and, saw. And that would be, so they always work together, but you can find out at which momentum is fascia in the foreground and where is the muscle in the foreground. And it would be very nice to alternate between the two. Gotcha. Um, can you talk about um, fascial lines and yeah, their, their yeah. importance? I found this fascinating. Yeah. So there are several lines. And my colleague, uh, Thomas Myers, an American uh, researcher and uh, body worker and teacher for many uh, body work practitioners and yoga teachers, has written a bestseller, it's called Anatomy Trains, Myofascial Meridians. So he found out that certain muscles are connected with each other, they have different names, via fascial connections. And now they are used all over. For example, if you have tensional headache, not migraine where one side is more than the other right and left, but more like uh, tension coming up from the back, Sure. Often, if you then massage your sit bones, which is one meter oh, down, wow. or even the fascia on the bottom of your foot, the plantar fascia, you can feel a, a release going all the way up there. Oh my gosh. And he showed us this is actually one big sling that, that you can influence. And it would be stupid if you only work on one place of it where the pain is, it would be much better to work on different places so that the whole sling starts to move again. And that is just one nice example that many people have included now into their fitness uh, rituals. Yoga teachers know about these lines, but also if you have some pain, let's say on the bottom of the foot, or you have some pain on the back of your head, you should not only think about a local solution, but how that is linked via your individual posture with other pieces in your body, maybe two meters further down or one and a half meters further down. The first time I heard about this was, uh, and I know you don't know who this is, uh, Stuart McGill, um, yeah. out of Canada. And yeah. he, he brought it up and he was giving an example with the shoulder all the way down to the lower extremity. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, yeah, I mean, he went into great detail on how it affected and... He knows a lot about these. Yes. Yeah. He and I uh, are also coaching some of the world's best javelin throwers. That's, that's what he was and, talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, they need strong muscles for sure. But with uh, strong muscles alone, you will not be a world champion. So you need an explosive muscular sling, not only from the arm, but actually down from the opposite leg and hip. And that's where the power comes out. Right, that's so what from the pelvis, and then you need to have elastic fascia so that your wrist is the last thing that comes forward. If it's the first thing, you only throw six meters. But if it's the last thing in an elastic sling, then you can throw close to a hundred meters now. 
Wow. And so this is very exciting. So we are doing video analysis of Thomas Roelo. He used to have the gold medal. And he doesn't have very big muscles, but he knows a lot about fascia. And I recently I had a chance to use my ultrasound and put it on his right pec major fascia. So in the fascial envelope covering the front of the yes. upper chest. And in him, of course, the right side is much stronger than on the left. He does. He has no interest to become symmetrical because yeah. he has no pain. Sure. And he has a chance to be, get the gold medal again. <laughs> yeah. sure. But uh, the fascial envelope in me is like half a millimeter thick. His was three millimeters. Oh thick. my gosh! This is wow. almost thick. You know, three millimeter fascia. You only have that on the bottom of the foot, so where you have right. your body weight on it. But when he throws the javelin spear. It's more than body weight, what he has there. So we got very excited and looked at the elastic recoil capacity and are now discussing with him how he can emphasize more on the elastic recoil and fascia and not only on the contraction speed of the muscles. Well, I saw somebody, um, I think it was a, a podcast you were doing and or maybe with somebody and they were showing somebody dorsiflex your ankle, break your ankle up. Yeah. And then yeah. they were showing how it became restricted as you put your leg up and as you put your neck forward. Oh, um, nice. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that um, would be one of these things. Very, very yes. nice. Yeah. Yes. I didn't make that up. It was my friend Tom Findley. That's, that's who true. Was, who was one of the leading fascia researchers. And I miss him very much because he finally... Uh, had to surrender to the long cancer that he had, oh, but no. he fought very bravely and he left a legacy for us. Yeah, he I, lived a very successful I life. I thought that was a great example. Yeah. I mean, so just, he, he jumped in the, in the lectures that we had here in uh, Ulm University in Germany. So he would jump on the podium <laughs> and do this thing. <laughs> so, sure. so, when, so how much you can lift the, the front right. foot. Right. Influenced by whether you bring your chin down or not. Exactly. <laughs> if that doesn't convince you, I don't know what does. Yeah. So, Dr. Schleib, I cannot tell you how much I enjoyed this. This was just fantastic. Again, uh, the book, this book, by the way, he's written many of them actually, is uh, Fascial Fitness Practical Exercises to Stay Flexible, Active, and Pain Free in Just 20 Minutes a Week. Very, very uh, helpful. I think uh, people are going to, you know, they're going to find answers to the problems that they've been having and they, they thought it was something else. So um, thank you for your time and uh, say hi to the people of Germany. <laughs> I do. And happy stair dancing. That is one of the exercises in the book. Yes. So when people are now going down the stairs, hopefully with minimal shoes, then they should have a happy down, a yep. happy bounce. I saw that. And, and uh, they can contribute it to my inspiration if they want. Very good. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you very much, Bob. Yep.